Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Today, we're going to alter a board book. And so this may take, this may take a couple episodes. Um, well, I'm sure it's going to take more than one episode. Um, but I'm, I think maybe we can, I can show you how to do the basic of the book. And then I'm going to kind of start gluing some background stuff on uh, working towards a theme. So I, I just went um, to the uh, like Goodwill and bought a few board books and I've already done this one. Let me show you though. When you buy it, looks like this. A board book is just made out of cardboard, um, heavy board, and it's got paper over the front. This one has some texture on it. Um, so it looks like this. So you can do a, some, several things. So this is, this is slick. So before you start putting something in, you can either put some gesso on it uh, you can sand it a little bit. You could um, go ahead and start gluing something over the top of it. Some people just glue directly to it. I like to peel off the picture because it's just one layer of paper. And then I have cardboard to work with. So let me show you. So I just peeled up the edge of that. <clears throat> and you can see it just peels off. So it takes a little while. You just have to peel it off. But honestly, I find this easier then gessoing every page because when you gesso the pages and stuff, you have to prop it open and wait for it to dry. Um, and sometimes if you want to get rid of the picture, it takes a couple, a couple of uh, coats of gesso to do that. Um, so if you peel off, I mean, it just takes you a minute or two and you can, you can sand it or, you know, like I just kind of pick at it until I find an edge to peel and then I start peeling. And sometimes they come off all in one, on one big piece um, you know and sometimes it's smaller pieces but you can see you can peel it off and then you're just left with cardboard uh, so you can then you can do something with it so this one I've already peeled all of the pages the interesting thing about board books is they come in so many different shapes and sizes um, this one is this one was a Halloween one and the the cover is kind of pressed there's texture so I'm going to have to be sure that I um, collage something over that. So if I just painted that, you would still see where it says Halloween on it. But I could just paint a base on the inside because it's just cardboard now. And this is really cool. This one, each of these little pages has a flip up that goes a different direction. So that's really fun. This would make a fun little gift book um, for somebody, you know, for their birthday or or something like that. You could you could do a choose a theme and put like a little quote in here for for the theme or or a particular picture. You know you could put um, this would be a fun little photo album. Even you could you could like collage something here, make something artsy here, and then put a photo underneath. Um, you know so there's lots of lots of things you could do with board books. This is the one we're going to work on today. <clears throat> this one's a little bit different. When I took this one apart. Um, well, the when I bought it, the spine was already coming apart. This one, though, has a cover, and then it folds out into all of these pages. And so you have some choices. You can, you know, do it so that you're going to flip different ways, you know, or you could, you could turn it over and, and, like, have it go two different directions. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to want to uh, maybe display it, uh, you know, like hold it, and, you know, put it up and display it. So it will, you know, I can kind of zigzag it like that. So that will mean the pictures all kind of need to go together uh, on the front and the back and the inside and everything. So this is the one I'm going to work with. Um, the theme, I think, is going to be fall. We still have a little bit of fall left. It's not quite Thanksgiving yet. Um, and so I have these doodles that uh, I have drawn um, previously. Uh, I haven't really done anything with them yet. I was, I was just doodling along and thinking about um, making like a, a 3D something with them, popping stuff up off. Um, but I have these, so I'm thinking what I will do is I, I'm thinking I will... Um, maybe copy these. I'll just I'll just put them on my copier. These are the originals. Um, they're done on, I think they're just done on kind of a Manila e-art paper. 
I have to look. It's I think it's just one of the Strath Strathmore sketchbooks or something. Um, so they're just they're just done in black ink on some kind of heavier weight paper. It's not cardstock, but it's not thin paper. But my my thought is I would copy them and then I could color them with markers and cut them out and use them as focal images. So I can use these, I can put some backgrounds in, I can, you know, put some in. I may, I'll probably have to draw some other stuff or maybe find some more things because I don't have quite enough, quite enough to go along, but uh, you know, might, I might do the same scene or do a different scene on the other side, uh, something like that. So that's kind of my idea. And so to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collage all of the surfaces in here with um, book page. And so I have, the, these pages are from an old uh, grammar textbook. Probably, I don't know if I'll use the ones that are stained yellow or not. Um, these are, here are some, some dictionary. This is, here's an index. These are, these are fairly thin. This is from Dictionary of in Interesting Facts. Uh, and these are actual dictionary pages. And so I'm, I'm thinking I'm just, I just want to kind of put down a base of collaged paper. Uh, and honestly, I think I may just stick with one. I, I really like this one. I like the feel of the paper. It's, it's fairly thin, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna take up a lot of, a lot of room. And I can just kind of tear it up and collage it every which way. Um, and so that's that's my that's my plan. Uh, so I thought thought maybe we'd just get started with that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do it in probably fairly large pieces, um, just you know, so it'll move along a little faster. And I am gonna have to cover the spine certainly. Um, let's see, I'm trying to decide so. I wonder if I should start there and kind of kind of glue down into the edges. Um, I because I just want a base. I, I'm probably I'm going to put some some paint and things over this, so it's it doesn't matter really, uh, you know, whether it's small pieces or, or particularly interesting. I just want some I want something down that's not just plain cardboard. So I am using my wallpaper, Universal Wallpaper and Border Adhesive, and I just have. And I'll, you know, a cheapy, a cheapy chip brush that I'm going to use um, to lay some of this down. So I'm just going to get some glue down here. And I'm, you know, this is going to take a little while to dry, so I'm going to get, going to get this on here, and then just kind of, kind of let it dry. And I'm just going to use that top edge. And if, you know, this is going to have paint and stuff on it. So if, you know, if a little bit of the tape shows through, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Like I've, I've torn it a little bit right there. Um, but I'm just looking. I'm just looking for some basic coverage here, just to just to get something started, and you know, and I don't mind. I don't mind if the top edge is plain. Um, you know, we're gonna doodle and, and do stuff to it and put stuff over it, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna try to get some of those air bubbles out. Use my good old fingers here to rub it all down. You know, I watch everybody use all these tools and everything, and I, I find that I just do better with my fingers. <laughs> when I put tools on things like this, I, I tend to rip it, and I guess because I push too hard, I don't, I don't really know. Um, let's see. But this way, maybe. And I think um, while I'm doing this, I'll probably, I'll probably, I'm not sure I'll speed up the, the camera. I'll probably just, um, you know, cut away. You get the gist. I don't, I don't think you need to, to watch me 
do all of this. I mean, you're certainly welcome to hang around, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure that's the most fun thing in the world, right? To uh, to watch somebody glue paper on all the time. But you know, maybe I don't know. Maybe you're doing something else, and you know, I think a lot of times I put on uh, YouTube videos when I'm doing stuff, and so I'm just kind of kind of listening to somebody talk. I'm not really watching everything they do, so. That maybe is what you're doing. So I don't mind the wrinkles. That doesn't bother me. You know, just adds to the character a little bit. I didn't get quite to the edge there, did I? Did I? Did I? <laughs> I'm just using the straight edges on the paper just so I don't have to do too much trimming. I mean, I don't, I don't mind trimming some, but, uh, you know. So. All right. So I'm just going to keep doing this and I will be back when the gluing is done and it's dry and we can do something else to it. Then we'll do the fun stuff, right? But this is just the prep part. So see you in a few. Hi, I'm back. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, the images. So I have made copies. I just put them on my copier. My printer is not very good. It doesn't print very dark. It's kind of uneven. I mean, it's fine for documents. <clears throat> but even on the picture setting, it's not great. Uh, so I just went ahead and copied these and I'll kind of, when, when I'm coloring them, I'm gonna use some alcohol markers. I'll re-outline things that I think need it, uh, that kind of stuff. But I wanna show you, when I did the original drawings, I used um, these pens, some, some micro line pens. So they range from 0 0.05 millimeters up to a brush. Uh, the one I like the most is the 0.5, not the 0 0.05, it's the half millimeter. And I did the originals on some Strathmore drawing paper. So I had told you it was, it was a, little, uh, a little heavier. So it's heavier than coffee paper, but it's not cardstock. This kind of has a cream color to it, which is, is fine. Um, when I copied it, it didn't really show up, so I don't mind. Uh, I can copy it, I can scan it in and resize it, uh, things like that. Hey, excuse me just a minute, my cats are rolling around on top of something. <laughs> okay, sorry, crafting with cats, right? Um, but I just wanna show you some of these drawings because they're super simple. You can draw them, um, they're, not, they're not difficult. So let's take a look at a few of these and I'll show you how I drew them. Um, this is not this is not overly difficult. The leaf shape obviously is just kind of a curve out up to a point. You can give yourself a little bit of a a spout there, you know. Um, then it's just a matter of what kind of I feel like this is kind of off the page here. What kind of decorations you want. So on these you can see um, I did some little dot doodles. I filled in with circles. I just did some squiggly lines. I did little uh, straight lines here. And a lot of times I do something in a fine pen and then after I'm done with it, I might go back with a, with a heavier weight pen uh, just because I feel like if I do it in fine pen and I make a mistake, I can correct it with the heavy weight. When I go back over it, I can, I can fix any little problems. Um, if I put a line in the wrong place or, you know, like if it just kind of goes off a little bit, the fat pen is going to cover it. So like down here, I kind of made that pointy. Now, if I went back in with a heavier pen, um, like the 0.8. Uh, 
is heavier at this point. I can kind of correct that. I can do a heavier outline. And I can make this more you know, like, like the piece of the leaf like the little stem or something if I wanted to. Right? I still didn't do that very well, but you know, probably should have made it fatter here and thinner here. So like if I had done this. Okay, and so now my leaf is kind of small for that. So, you know, my point is if you mess it up, you can always just keep adding to it until it becomes what you want it to be. So now I've made my leaf a little bit bigger. I can add something else out around it. Um, you know, and I could even do some little, some little lines. So, you know, I can, you can fix it. So keep playing with it, even if you get something that you don't like, like this isn't great, that little stem still isn't, still isn't great, but it's better than it was. And you can kind of keep playing with it. So if you use a finer liner to start with, you can, you can always go over it in something fatter and it'll help it. Okay, so let's take a look at a mushroom. So you can see the mushroom is a stem with a partial circle and then kind of a little hat. So if I draw my stem and it can be lots of different shapes, mushroom stems are, you know, lots of shapes, right? And then I'm gonna wanna draw my partial circle up around it so I can see up underneath, right? And then my little hat kind of on top of it, okay? And so you can see here I've got that and then I've got that under part of the mushroom and maybe I want some funky little splotches on there right and maybe I want a few more down here I think those are called the gills of the mushroom I think I want a few more gills. Not quite enough, I think. There we go. I like that better. You know, and the thing about doodling is you can fill in any design you want. It doesn't have to be realistic. It's a doodle, right? It's not about whether or not the drawing is hyper-realistic. It's about whether it conveys the idea that you want to convey if you're trying to convey an idea. I mean, it could just be a shape that you're doodling. You know, if you're trying to convey an idea, then it does that. And then it has whimsy to it. It has your own take on how that might look. See, now when I was um, tracing, I kind of got off there, right? So I can just heavy up that line a little bit. Make that leading edge. A little darker you can always fix it that's the thing about doodles is it's not you know it doesn't have to be representational in the fact you know in the idea that uh, it has to be like photorealistic it doesn't it doesn't have to be that you know it's not it's not a photorealistic mushroom but you can tell it's a mushroom right you know, and so if I want to darken up some of those lines, I can do that. I don't have to. Sometimes I only darken the outside, like the major outline, and then I leave the interior lines finer. You can always do that. You don't have to darken it at all. You can leave it, and then when you color it, you might go back after you color it uh, with a Sharpie and do it then, right? I tend to like fat lines, but I like that kind of coloring book, dark line look. So that's kind of, you know, the look I'm usually going for. Um, coloring books make me happy. 
I don't color in them very often, but they make me happy. So that's pretty simple. Um, let's see what other shapes are there. So I think uh, this is a fun little flower, right? And this is just some little leaves with circles. So all I did here was I did a stem and a stem. I did some little leaves on the stem. Some more down here. And then I just filled the top with little circles and made kind of a cone shape. These are a little, this is a little finer, a little smaller. And you know, the thing about doodles is when you do it this way, no two are ever going to look exactly the same. So, you know, if you do one and you like the way it looks, then, you know, you can follow your process again, but it's probably not going to look exactly like that. Right? It's, it's just not because it's a little hand drawn, you know, doodle. All right, so if I just wanted to you know, do those, I don't think I would redraw over, over the little uh, circles because I think I'm going to lose them with the heavier, with the heavier weight pen. Okay, so that's this. Um, this one is just some little berries. It's just little circles with a dot, right? If you do, you do some little stems, do a circle, do a little dot on the end. Circle, dot. You know, and two, the thing about this is you can fill in all kinds of stuff around things and, you know, and have lots and lots of things. Um, let's see. How about, <clears throat> how about some of the acorns? So the acorns are a little cap, sort of like the mushroom, that comes up and has a little stem. Okay, so you've got a little cap with a stem, and then your acorn just comes down, kind of rounded off, rectangle. And you might add some little things for interest, a little crisscross. Right. So, and you can do several of them, like that one's kind of fat, came out a little fat. So if I was, and I don't see, I didn't, I didn't swap over to a different pen and did it with the fatter pen, huh? So I might be able to come out around and round this out a little bit, make my cap extend a little more. Didn't quite get it where I wanted it. I want my printer's doing back there. It's not printing anything. <laughs> it's just making noise. Yeah, so I could I could do that to emphasize the cap and then a little more here, kind of pull this in. So you can always do something, you can always add a line, you can always change it a little bit. All right, let's see, what else do we have on here? Um, this one is simply a figure eight with leaves in it, right? So you do a stem and then you kind of do a number eight or like a little bow. Right. And these are making a little bit smaller as I go up. And then you can do something to the leaves. So here I gave them a definite little leaf pattern. This would be a really cute um, tail for a kite. You could put it, you know, you could put it on a kite, right? If you wanted to do like a little diamond shape. 
you could do some little dots. So you could make this into little bows or you could or you could make it into little leaves. Depends on how you're going to use it and where it is. Okay. Um, let's see. This one again is just stems going off in different directions with a little circle at the end. So a lot of leaf kind of things and plant kind of things are, are very simple shapes. So there's this. I've got one here, something come off here. Here. Doesn't really matter, wherever you want them. All right. Um, and then you can put some put some little round seeds or something. These could be seeds on a winter tree. Should have swapped back over to that fine liner, huh? I think I need a little stem here. Maybe one here. So this is all I do. I, I put a few on there and I fill it in and I start looking at where there are empty spots. And I put something in it. So any, you know, any shape you want, you can, you know, you can make that. This is, these things are really good for filling in spaces. Let me go back to my finer pen here. Let's see. Um, same idea with the mushroom. That one is leaves. Let's see. The little apple is just a half circle here with kind of a, you know, like somebody took a bite out of it. And then a half circle here that somebody took a bite out of. And then we've just got kind of that core in the middle. And what, what makes it look, tell us it's an apple, are the little seeds and the stem. Right? And then we can you know, add some curves to it if we wanted to. So it's just very, very simple line work. So you can always, you know, doodle something. And when you're going to put together a, a page, if you want to doodle a bunch of stuff on something separately, on a book page or on paper, and then color it and cut it out, you can do that. You can doodle directly on the page. It depends on how uh, confident you are, right? So these are a little bit larger. The basic pumpkin, you can see, is kind of a rounded rectangle. And then it just has little kind of fat partial circles coming off of it. So if I do kind of a rounded rectangle for the middle piece here. And then this kind of comes up a little bit. It curves a little. Goes out and around. Right, and this one that comes out and around. We have one on this side. You know, and pumpkins aren't perfect, so if your pumpkin's not perfect, well that's okay. It looks like a pumpkin from the patch, doesn't it? So we want to go ahead and put in our stem before we get behind there. Right? And then we can just bring in a curve here and a curve here to suggest that there's more on the other side. So and you know, I might go in with my heavier heavier marker and outline the major parts of it and then you can decorate 
you know, the pumpkin as you wish, which is what I did here. I just doodled all over them, right? So it's the same, it's the same kind of thing, okay? So I just wanted to show you that it's not, it's not difficult. Um, if you want to create something, you know, like a scarecrow, just look at a picture, right? Oh, look, Google a coloring page, Google like simple scarecrow coloring page. And then you'll see something that looks like this and you can draw it. This is basically kind of a little round head. He's got kind of a raggedy Andy sort of like straw hair, a little hat. You know, I just drew him straight out, right? I didn't have to draw hands or feet, it's just straw. So, you know, you can, you can always like look at a picture and just see the basic idea. These are just rectangles. This is a rectangle. These, this is, these are rectangles, right? That's really all they are. They're just connected. You can certainly draw it in lightly in pencil and then go over it in a heavier ink if you're, if you're, you know, not confident enough. Um, but that would, you know, that would be one way to do it. Uh, if you really just don't think you can do it, you could use a super simple coloring book. Um, you can go to like Dollar Tree and buy uh, like a, a fall coloring book that has motifs in it um, that you could then color or you could uh, doodle on and change, right? So those are all just ideas, things that you can do. So I hope, I hope, you know, looking at how these are just pretty simple lines, you'll see that uh, you can you can doodle your own lines um, and make your own own little fall fall motifs here. Um, so I'm going to color some of these while I'm waiting for that to dry, uh, and then I will be back. I'm I'm probably just going to go ahead. I'm just going to use my alcohol markers. Um, I have a couple different kinds of alcohol markers, so uh, I'm just gonna just gonna take a look at this. So I have these. These are Banyo uh, twin tipped. So there's a fat chisel tip and there's a fine bullet tip. Um, so those are probably the ones I will use. I have a couple of different ones in here, but I have most of these are left. You can see a few of them I've run out of, um, but I really like these markers. Uh, so I will be back um, when, that, when my book is dry and when these are colored and we can kind of start putting some things together. You can see what we're gonna do with this. Okay, be back in a few. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, this is dry and I went ahead and put a little washi tape along the edges. Uh, some of them were kind of rough and were coming apart a little bit. You can see I fixed a little bit of it. Um, you might remember I had put some uh, blue tape, painter's tape to reinforce underneath this. So um, I've reinforced a little bit of it and, and particularly around the front, it was, it was pretty rough looking. Um, so I gave it, I gave it a little bit of washi tape just to kind of hold it together a little better, but it's all dry and it's, um, it has book page on both sides. So before I start, um, gluing things down, I think I would like to, uh, put some watercolor down. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, kind of move along here. I'm just going to kind of do all one side and and then another, um, I have a couple different, I'm gonna use uh, some of my kind of crystallized, these are pearlescent watercolor paints. Um, I got these at Ross, a discount store, excuse me, a discount store in our area. Um, and you can see they're all just different colors of kind of pearlescent paint. This was very expensive. I think I paid $5 for this tray. Um, these were a little more expensive, but not much. Um, and these are metallic, and you can see I kind of have quite a mess here. Uh, but I've used some of the gold all the way down, and, and these are these are all kind of metallic. Um, so I'm going to be sort of putting that on, I think, uh, all the way down, and just in just kind of wide swaths of color. Uh, I plan on sticking to kind of oranges, greens, yellows, gold, that kind of stuff. Um, I've started coloring. Let me grab those. I started coloring uh, some of the things. I have not finished coloring, uh, but let me show you. So 
Um, I cheat a little bit when I'm gonna do a larger or something. I, I pick the lightest color and, and do all of it behind and then do the darker ones on top. That only works if they're all in the same color family. Uh, for example, here I kind of did this, this kind of goldy yellow and then I did a little bit of brown and green on it. Um, two shades of green, you know. I did it on the leaves here and the pumpkins as well. Um, where I used kind of, this is more of a gold and this one's more of a, a yellowy orange. Goodness, I don't know what my kitty cats are doing today, but they're being, oh, they're just wrestling, I guess. Um, so I, I kind of, I say I cheat. I just like fill the whole thing in and then I go in with other colors and just do parts of it rather than color everything. So I haven't, uh, I haven't colored this yet. Um, I only do this, of course, when I know I'm going to cut it out. Because once I cut it out, you won't see any of that. And it'll all just look, it'll, it'll look nice, I think. Um, so I'm going to continue working on coloring those things uh, after, after we do this while this is drying. Um, I think this is probably going to be the last step for this video. Um, just because I'm running out of time. Running out of time today. Uh, but we do, we have turned the book into you know, a, a nice long piece of um, book page collage. And then we've, uh, we're getting ready to, to put some uh, watercolor paint on it. So I think that'll, that'll be good. And we can stop there and I can finish coloring, cut it all out. Uh, and then when we, when, when I come back next time, um, we'll be ready to start, start decorating and maybe doing some doodling on the pages. So I'm gonna use, I have two brushes. I have a really large one here and then I have kind of a, a medium one. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the really large one uh, just because I feel like I'm, I want kind of large swaths of, of color. Um, this is not about any pattern or anything. This is just about kind of putting something down. Uh, you know, so I just, I just don't want it to be blank behind, you know, and, and I want it to be kind of different colors and I want to kind of stick to those autumn, autumn colors. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, go back and forth between some of the colors here. And I, you know, I'm messy with watercolors. Like, you know, I mean, I can be neat, but, but I'm, I'm pretty messy with my watercolors because I use them mostly as background or, you know, I like, uh, I like painting on book pages uh, and then, you know, doodling things over the top of it. So I'm thinking we might do some of that. I have this, the, you know, those things I showed you that we're gonna, we're gonna cut out. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean we can't, uh, we can't doodle some more stuff on top of it. So I'm kind of after the golds and reds and greens and coppers and things like that. So I don't mind if they all kind of run together here. Yeah, so that's, I just want, I just want a little color in the background. And you can see this is nice because it's picking up um, the edges and the, the wrinkles, um, you know, and it's just kind of throwing some of that into the background. Boy, that water is just going pretty fast. It's, I'm in Arizona and it's very dry. So even, you know, even this time of year, it's not, I mean, it's colder, you know, but it's not cold. It's cool. I think the high today was, was 68 and we're probably not quite there yet um, because it's not late in the afternoon yet. We tend to hit our high about um, four o'clock or so. Uh, so, you know, it's on its way to 68. Um, I was out this morning and I want to put a little green down. So I want to be sure I get a little bit of this off because I don't want it to turn to mud. Um, but that green. Um, I was out this morning taking a walk and uh, was really enjoying the morning air. It was, it was not, it was not cold. It was just kind of crisp and clear and cool. It was uh, it was very nice. That's kind of nice. Just a little bit of green. Um, I did, however, lock myself out of the house because uh, when I left, 
I, uh, I went out to the garage and I closed the garage and everything was fine. And then when I got back, the garage door opener battery had died. Uh, so I was stuck outside. I couldn't, I couldn't open the garage door uh, to get into the house. So that was fun. Um, I didn't take my keys with me because I was just planning on, you know, coming back in through the garage. So I was, I was stuck outside until my very kind father, uh, I called him and he lives, he and my mom live oh, 10, 15 minutes from here. Not very far, 10 minutes maybe. Um, and so he, he was kind enough to bring his keys over and uh, let me in, let me in, let me in. And so that was, you know, that was a way to start the day, I guess. And I'm just, uh, you know, so it was nice. I, I promised myself I would try to do better with walking. Um, it's so hot here in, in the summertime that you really just don't want to, you know, you don't want to walk. It's too hot. You don't want to be outside. Um, even early in the morning, it's, you know, in the height of summer, the low is like 85. So um, it can be. He can be a, a little, uh, little, um, you know, overbearing. The heat can be. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. We'll go back. I got a little bit of green here in the middle. Um, this beginning is kind of light. I wonder about put a little bit darker. Darker gold down here, maybe. Kind of got a little more of this orangey stuff going on. I wonder about uh, throwing a little green over here and with it you know I just I don't really care if it just kind of all melds together that's really I just want something that's not a solid color so that's that's really all I'm looking for here and it's it's pretty much already dry so just kind of a progression here Greens and golds, and a little bit of green, and kind of a coppery red, into kind of a green and gold, back to some of that coppery. Maybe a little, maybe a little more green at the end down here. Just trying to. I think this is really gonna be pretty. I I hope anyway. Um, it's my, you know, I I keep I kept saying I was gonna do a fall journal, and uh, I never never got there. And I'm about to run out of time because it's about to be time to do Christmas stuff. So I thought if I could get it done, you know, before Thanksgiving, that uh, that would be that would be sufficient, and and it could be up for you know out for Thanksgiving. Missed a couple spots, and uh, you know then then I could put it away for for next year. So. That's, I just I just want some modeled modeled colors there. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and do the other side. It's damp, but when I'm done, I can stand it up. Uh, and let it dry, so it should be okay, I think. Start with some of that green on this side. I'm not really sure like I'm just I don't know if I'm gonna write anything you know like I don't I don't know should I should I put some quotes on it should I put something like you know thankful or grateful or thanksgiving or something like that or just or should I just you know put leaves and and uh, pumpkins and things like that so just not uh, not really sure here whether to, you know, whether to put anything written on it. I, I tend to put, uh, you know, quotes and stuff on a lot of things. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe this will be different. I don't put a quote on it, right? 
and you can see I'm just I'm just slopping this down. This is not there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's it's just a little bit of color so that the background isn't just plain, right? Comfrey red here. Let's get back to this. I got those pearlescent ones out and I'm not even using them, huh? You know what? I really love these metallics. They're they're my favorite. <laughs> so oh, I really like how that's picking up the the wrinkles in that one. Ooh. I thought I did a good job of getting some of those. Some of the edges between were, were a little rough, so I may need to go back with a little washi tape on those. Which is, you know, that's all I did on the edge, is I just, I just put some washi tape on it and folded it over the edge just to, just to keep it from being quite so, quite so rough. But that one looks a little, it's this one where it's bending, where the bend is right here, where the fold is. Looks, looks a little iffy. So. Slather a little green on here. This, you know, and this metallic, it's not super, super shiny, um, but there's definitely a metallic, you know, glint to it when you're when you're looking at it, it's it's definitively metallic-y. Okay, got some green out over there. Let's try some of this coppery. I can't believe I just keep having to put so much water on it. <laughs> But it just keeps drying out. It's just dries so fast. Um, when you do watercolor things here, it just dries really fast. This one's looking a little rough too along the edges there. That may need that may need a little washi tape as well. Let's go ahead and see if we can dig out a little more of that gold. There's not much of it left because it's my favorite. Can you tell? I'm sure you can when you look at how much is left of it. <laughs> but it is definitely my favorite. Just gonna go back over the top. A lot lighter at this end, but that's Partially because it's so much, so much drier. So. A little bit there. Okay. All right. And so I am just going to um, kind of set it up to dry like that. And um, I will be back next time to finish it up. I'll have everything colored. I'll have it cut out. And well, I don't know if we'll finish the whole book, but we'll at least get the first couple pages of it done. Uh, and then, you know, if I, if I need to finish it um, and show it to you, I will. So until next time, remember, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Bye.